Welcome uh, tips for sine and four uh, questions B one and uh, B two. It's a nice collection of questions in terms of seeing different solution methods. In all cases, uh, since we haven't done the, since we haven't covered the principal minor test for board Hessians, B1 and B2 concern writing down Lagrange and L. Step two, writing down the FOCs. So those are all the partial derivatives of the Lagrangian with respect to the variables. It can be one or it can be two or three variables. And um, uh, the lambda. I think in B1 and B2, there's always just one constraint. And then step three, uh, yeah, and then uh, 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 then you step three is solve the FOCs and there the range of questions gives you a nice uh, overview of ways and maybe some tricks to solve matters and step four is um, uh, fill in solve the FOCs which gives you the uh, stationary points Uh, fill in the stationary points, uh, call them, say, x0, but there can be various x0, so x0 factor. You evaluate f at x0 factor, and then you get a range of, of values, say, fi, and then you see for which fi um, a solution is a maximum if that's asked, or a minimum when that's asked. So let's look at B1. A is right there. We have uh, Lagrangian in A and the constraint functions of X and Y. So we have to write down the Lagrangian, which is F of X, Y here, plus uh, lambda H of X comma Y, uh, in this case, it's uh, is one, so minus one, C is one. Uh, so you fill that in. You fill in F and H given to get Lagrangian. So that's step one. Step two is you write down DL dx is, uh, is whatever it is, is zero, DL dy which is, uh, in this case, um, write it down. Um, uh, of course, you have to get it from the Lagrangian, which I haven't written down. But, but I write this one down explicitly because you see that you can take out 2y, so that's min 1 minus lambda is 0. <coughs> and that immediately gives you two cases. And that's the way to go here. y is 0 and uh, uh, lambda is 1. Then you have uh, DLDZ. Uh, oh, there is no DLDZ. DLD. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, DL, as it is, DLDY minus DLD lambda, which gives you the uh, constraint. Oh. I said plus, but it's minus, of course. Um, not that it matters, but that's what we have chosen. Minus 1 is, is 0. And you have to fill in a for h, of course, what it is, which in this case is x squared plus y squared. But the thing is here, I stress that, uh, and, and give them a number. So give this number 1, number 2, number 3, right? It's, it's very clear. Here you continue with the case y is 0. You, you find the solutions for that. And then, uh, well, or below that, once you're done with that, you get stationary points, I hope, 
uh, and then you consider the case lambda is one, which is another case. So if you have colors, who uh, you know with the white, uh, you have colors, you could get. Oh, what am I doing now? Um, so uh, that lambda as what? Well, that's what I wanted anyway. A color. Then you give him different colors so that you know that there are two distinct cases. Uh, and then at, at the last step, you once you have the stationary points, you fill in the stationary points in this um, function to see uh, what it is. Is it asked that? Yeah, it asks the maximum value. So you want you, you fill in all stationary points and see then for which stationary points you have a maximum. So uh, B one B. Uh, we do the same, but now we have function of uh, we find the point in the ellipse, ellipse x is closest and farthest away to the origin find the points on the ellipse in the xy plane you can by that closest to and farthest away, away uh, from the origin and hence find the maximum and minimum distance of the ellipse to the origin make a sketch uh, so it gives a hint so distance uh, in the 2d is is uh, uh, is, is basically from the origin is, is a radius so you could use the radius squared so hence x squared plus y squared is the objective function so the Lagrange and L of x y lambda is then f of x y minus lambda um, uh, and then the ellipse so that's h of x y uh, minus c and f is this distance function, that's the objective function minus lambda. And the points now lead to line the ellipse. Uh, oops, plus y squared minus nine. So that's the uh, that's the uh, uh, Lagrangian you need to look at. So then you um, Then you write down uh, the Lagrangian. So uh, then you write down the, the stationary, um, stationary, the first order conditions to find the stationary points. And in this case, you get something is zero. Oh. Well, let me uh, and minus uh, L lambda that gives you the constraint is zero. And but here. In the first two, so this you call one, this you call two, this you call three. In the first two, you get um, you get a structure where there is uh, uh, this is a structure where you get something times x minus lambda y. Uh, that's from uh, this one, right? Uh, um, Right, this um, <coughs> is zero, and in the sec for the second one, you get something times y minus lambda x. So uh, the this gives you a, a lambda y, and gives you this one a lambda x. And uh, ah, this is the same factor. Oh, I might as well write it down. This is the same factor, right? So this factor is the same, and this factor here, the lambda is also the same. But here it is x, here is y, here is y, and here is x. So then, uh, often it works to say. I take one uh, um, minus two, it, which is also zero, uh, and then you get two cases. From there, uh, uh, y is x, or or n lambda is two, which you look at in separation to find the stationary points. Uh, for both cases, right? So you have to look at them in, in separation. So that that's 
trick by subtracting is only relevant because here you are now get a factor if you subtract x minus y and here you get a factor y minus x so basically the whole thing is proportional to x minus y or y minus x which gives you which gives you this solution and what remains the factor in front gives you the, the lambda is 2 uh, so so when it has that structure you can you can use that trick now you you find stationary points that's up to you and then you substitute them in uh, the fun the objective function f so that gives you the uh, square of the distance so you then can determine which one is minimum which is maximum which is the question uh, raised so b 1 c go to black again is of a similar kind except that now we have a 3d function so we need, need a Lagrange with x y z and lambda uh, then we have a plane and here we use the objective function the square of the distance to the origin and here the uh, the plane so it's 4x plus 2y uh, what is it plus z minus 5 is 0. Now the FOCs here are now interesting when you have a plane you always get you get LX is something uh, minus 4 lambda is 0 LY is something minus 2 lambda is 0 uh, well it, 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 it's just 2 it's just 2x 2 2x 2y uh, oh, that is 2z minus uh, what is it lambda is zero and now you, and you number them again minus l lambda is whatever it is is zero you number them again right don't forget to number them but now you actually can get this gives you x is 2 lambda this gives you y is lambda this gives you z is uh, lambda over 2 so that right yes and this you can this you can immediately substitute in the linear uh, constraint namely the plane to get lambda once you have lambda you can find x y z because they're expressed here in terms of lambda and then uh, uh, and then uh, then you're done uh, which is logical and this you can picture in your head this is a, a, a sphere the objective function and the <coughs> plane just has to touch the sphere so it's actually useful to to draw this and in the other cases you have to draw it as well but you can easily draw in 2d but in 3d it's 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 the sphere and then the plane is is touching it so let's go to b2 it's more of the same b2 we don't need to use b3 that yet get that pretty I have to go out of the program to get there yeah now I'm there uh, B2 what we're doing method Lagrange multiplier solve the following constraint problem we have to check the NDCQ so oh what's going on now B2 B2 so the NDCQ which we should have checked in the previous cases, but you need to check that this is unequal to the zero fac factor. Uh, so the gradient of the constraint. So in the, ah, now we have two constraints in B2A. So L of x comma y, uh, is it set? Yes, set. And lambda 1 and then lambda 2, because we have two constraints. So you get f of x comma y comma z minus lambda one of uh, well let me of h one x comma y comma z minus c one minus lambda two of h two 
x comma y comma z minus c c2 this is c1 and uh well <coughs> you have to Um, and these are both planes. The no one. Uh, uh, the the first constraint is a is a circle, and the second constraint is a uh, 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 a plane. So that one you can use because now it makes sense. We have to write down the FOCs, but it's given that this is a plane, so that's. Uh, uh, what is it y plus z minus six so six is c2 it means that if you take the derivative of y and z you only get a lambda two in ly is whatever it is uh, 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 minus lambda two is zero lz is whatever it is minus lambda two is zero call this two call this three now if you subtract two minus three which is zero uh, is zero then you actually get two cases uh, um, from subtracting you actually get a lambda one is times y minus z so if you do check that and that gives you two cases lambda one is zero and y is z which you consider in in separation uh, yes ah and uh, yeah i mean that's because in this case this one is also proportional uh, has y plus set in it and this one has y plus set in it and that gives you the nice structure um so you consider the two cases and then again what do you need uh, you need to check that uh, you need to check the ndcq so in b2a you need to check that the gradient of h1 is not equal to the zero factor but also uh, for the NDCQ, but also the, the gradient of H2 is unequal to the zero factor. Uh, okay, B2B, we still maximize FXYZ with respect to s uh, 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 cylinder, Y squared plus Z squared is one, and XZ is three, which is some, some, some skew thing. Uh, I'm, I'm making a video, uh, so, so now again, L Lagrangian, you have two Lagrangian, uh, Lagrangian has two Lagrange multipliers, uh, so that's X set plus Y set minus lambda one, what is it, X Y squared plus Z squared minus one minus lambda two x z minus three uh, and now you you write down the three FOCs, um and the first one so the first one lx gives you z where's the other x there's an x here and there's an x here so minus lambda two z is zero and so this is z i don't want to space anymore z one minus lambda two is zero so and, and of course you have to write down the other ones but this one immediately gives you z is zero or lambda two is one but z is zero is not allowed because then um well you have to do the other ones but if you do minus a lambda you get x z minus three is zero and when x is zero minus three is zero so this one is not allowed uh, so we need to go for another one uh, we're knowing no we, we need to go for the the other uh, first of the conditions but knowing that lambda 2 is now 1 we can uh, combine uh, what will be 2 and 3 so if we oops can I go a bit yeah so L y is whatever it is is zero call that two and lz is whatever it is is zero that's three 
and this is actually four so it's a bit illogical and this is one uh, now we can combine them we can we, we combine two and three uh, to get um, that uh, uh, that uh, two and three if you write it out it gives you two lambda one is uh, z over y is uh, y over z once you have used that lambda two is one and this gives you immediately that y is plus or minus z uh, that comes from y squared to z squared which follows from these two relationships right if you multiply by y and z you get y squared is z squared so y is plus or minus z so you consider y is z case that's your first case and then different color you consider the y is minus z case uh, and then at the end, uh, and then you find the stationary points, you see what do you need to do uh, maximum, which for which value of the stationary points, the original F is maximum, is that right? Yes, that's right. And then you have at the end, you have to check that the two, uh, uh, and the two, uh, 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 what is it, constraints, H1 and H2, that they satisfy the uh, uh, NDCQ uh, condition. So that finishes this then. Um, um, there's tips. Um, uh, what about question A4 that has, uh, is it economic, economic application with a bit of a story, a story Economic application is not exam material, but the analysis asked is, uh, and it's um, it's a short, two, um, I think there are two or three questions. Uh, they have short answers, but you, you have to look at the, the values given. It's a story with then a numerical values uh, provided for you. And then you have to uh, stare at these values, their signs, and what they mean to get the um, answers. But it gives you a bit of background. Okay, that's it for assignment four, first part of assignment four.